My name is Chris Erickson. My workshop was on uh, photography um, practices in the public system and specifically utilizing resources in and around the community in Toronto. There's a lot of different um, spaces that are available to people to learn technology, to um, learn about images and image making and um, specifically around how people can make their own images around photography. And um, part of the interest I had was um, that everybody makes photos and uh, to start from that as, as a kind of a, a content or a content and pedagogical goal, like we all know how to make photos and we all know how we do that, right? So make that kind of the focus of, of what goes on in the classroom rather than learning from scratch, you know, how to print in the darkroom or how to do digital stuff and all that kind of thing. Um, work with existing knowledge and then try to amplify that and build on it. Mm -hmm. Photography is a way of knowing. I mean, it's similar to other kind of language systems like English or, or um, you know, formalized written languages and stuff, but it's also different. And um, I think it's worth emphasizing that we can, again, we can treat it as if it's a text, as if photographs are text, and do critical analysis and that kind of thing. But it's still something that we're engaged in, right? So it's there's there's something missing if we just treat it as a text. It's still there's still these kind of per personal and emotional connections we have with images, and I think thinking about what that means is 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 hard, <laughs> but it's also very useful to try to do that. Right? Two big myths about photography are that photographs aren't real and that they are, or vice versa, right? And in some ways, every photograph is both an artifice, it's both a construction, and it's an aspect of the real. And to pretend that photographs are either one or the other is, is problematic. So if, if students start to think about what that all implies, that there's still something real about every photograph that we make, there's still something personal, something that we've seen, there's still evidence of reality, and there's still something of, of the artificial or the construction of it, there's still fiction attached to it, um, to think about what that might be for their own use of cameras and, and how, they, how they make sense of the world through phot photography. The first thing uh, I like to do is, is just get description. That's very hard to do, Naming. believe it or not. <laughs> to name what's actually s visible in the image. Because a lot of assumptions come out and there's actually um, uh, a difference obviously between facts and assumptions. And there's factual things that are going on in the photograph and in the context of the photograph. It's uh, a different image if it's published on the cover versus if it's published on page three of the sports section or something like that. Mm. So just naming those things is a very important first step that often gets missed. And even in the process of naming, it's hard to do a very, very plain description. There's a lot of assumptions that emerge. So people see um, uh, a picture of, of uh, two people and they say, well, there's, there's two people and they're happy. Well, are they happy or are they models who are feigning happiness? Like that's a very important distinction to make. So being very descriptive of what's going on and the photograph is a good first place to start and to write down that description and uh, I like to do that in group work so that people can will have to kind of question each other and, and come to some kind of consensus or agreement uh, of what that description is and challenge each other on the assumptions that they're making and then to start the analysis once a good rich discussion and description is developed then to start the analysis and not to shortchange that description at all it's very important to, to do that kind of thing so. One of the things I try to emphasize in the workshop is that um, the vocabulary around photography doesn't need to uh, come from the, the, the teacher or the educator at the front of the room. Um, as students find they're trying to name things and, and, and struggle to name things, some of that could be their own independent research as they're trying to um, figure out what are the appropriate photographic terms for some of these things. like framing, uh, composition, contrast, these kinds of things. Um, and some of it's um, compositional stuff, so looking at some of the artistic terms that might be used for, for some of the things. And then of course going on the, on the content side, looking at some of the sociological terms. So I think there's a lot of uh, vocabulary stuff that, that's uh, of value here.
it's always the desire to, to land on something that's a, a fairly coherent and closed and, and sort of fixed message but with photographs it's so messy and I think um, trying to get over the fear of that messiness is an important first step because um, photography enriches any kind of visual means enriches our experience of the world so much um, so it's just trying to get over that <laughs> fear is the big first step and to see that nothing can ever really be closed with photography, I, I would argue with language as well, um, but just to explore that with your students in as open and honest a manner as possible. It can be very daunting and overwhelming, but I think it's well worth it when you do land on some important learning moments. So.